Hello and welcome to part two of the video series stock price prediction using recurrent neural networks. In part one, basically we introduce the problem, we introduce the data set, we visualize the data and more importantly, we transform or represented our problem as a single target regression problem. In this um, part of the video series, we will actually be implementing um, the stock price prediction problem uh, using recurrent neural networks in TensorFlow. So our notebook, our coding notebook, will exactly start from uh, where we ended it in um, in in the video in in the part one. So let's dive in and see how can we implement uh, stock price prediction using recurrent neural networks in TensorFlow. So um, now let's uh, pick the data set. Let's focus on uh, let's focus on the opening open values. So our data set is DF. I locate locate all the values with index just go through all the rows all the records and just pick only the open values values so that's our data set so we can now see the shape of D which is so there are total 12,075 records and all these values are um, the opening values just as I show you in this slide um, these are all the data, so the total data points here, the total days that are there in uh, this particular data set, there are uh, 12,075 days. Uh, next, let's split the data into training set and test set. Let's say we, we, we train our model on, let's say, first 10,000 days, let's say, and then after training our model for 10,000 days, let's predict the values after that. So we don't use the, um, the data more than 10,000 days and let our model to predict uh, the prices from the 10,000th day onwards. Um, obviously one day at a time, uh, given the previous values of 100 days. And then we will test, uh, for example, the, the predicted values and the actual values because we already have the actual values for other days as well. So let's see, uh, let's see our training set is uh, D from the beginning to N and our test set, let's say, is uh, D from N to end. So let's see, these are our test sets and uh, training sets. Next, um, if we, for example, want to sh see what is the, how many are there, how many values are there in the training set and how many values are there in the test set, we can check that using multiple commands. One command is just to check the shapes. So there are about 2,000 um, values for validation the model, for validating the model and there are 10,000 values, the early values, from where we are going to, for example, train our model. Um, next, uh, let's pre-process our data. It is a good, um, it's a good thing to actually pre-process all the data uh, to to normalize the data within a particular range. So let's, for example, from sklearn dot preprocessing pre -pro, pre processing import min max scalar. Let's do that, and let's import TensorFlow as df because now we are going to build our model. And we are going to build our model in, in TensorFlow. So it is importing the package. Um, it is imported now. So the transform, the scaling transform, let's say min max scalar. Let's say we set the range, feature range between zero and one. So let's say it is between zero and one. So all the values, they should be scaled between zero and one. So, oh. What's the, oh, it's feature range. It's feature range, yeah. So next, we actually convert our training data as well as our test data um, in this particular range. So training set scaled is um, sc dot fit transform. And we use the training set for this. And then we go for test set using this um, particular transform scaled. 
as sc dot transform our test set so I have I've learned the transformation from the training set and then I use the transformation on the test set just like the standard way um, next what we do is we actually generate our training data for different sequence lengths the trainings and targets let's use the term X train to contain the training sequence and Y train to contain the corresponding targets and let's say initially they are both empty and then what we do is uh, for uh, let's define a sequence length how many days do we really want so let's define the sequence length um, the total number of days we really want to see um, to predict the next day let's say it's 100 just for now you can play with this number for I in range let's build the data um, sequence length um, to the um, length of training data scaled and take minus uh, sequence length so it will start from 100 and it will go till um, whatever the size of the training data is minus 100 in this particular case and this I will be used to build the X train sequence and Y train sequence so X train dot append whatever that is there in training scaled uh, from uh, I minus sequence length which means for the very beginning till I and just pick that just pick only that value and that will be for example when I is 100 it will pick the first 100 numbers and will place there and then uh, the corresponding target value is the current I value which is the training scaled and exactly it is the value I am 0 and that's how we actually build all our training data now X train actually is a list of a lot of arrays and Y train is the corresponding targets so next what we do is actually these X train and Y train these both are lists let's convert them to numpy arrays so X train Y train is basically np dot array X train and Y np dot array Y train and now if you for example see X train dot shape it will be like uh, there are 9800 uh, samples 9800 samples each sample has um, 100 features in in the in the sense of feature vectors and the corresponding y train will be a vector of length 9800 yeah oh y train is nothing why is that oh we haven't used the append function here we have to use append that's a that's a big mistake append and here is what we are going to append so that's a mistake just found so that's X train and now this is our Y train similarly uh, we do the same stuff with um, Y um, X test and Y test as well exactly the same stuff so to build the test data for evaluation let's do that so our X test test and Y test this is TS scaled and everything is same except this is TS this is TS and these are test rather than train now so all good I guess our testing data is also ready now now what we have to do is we actually have to reshape this data in the form of tensor just to use for example for the batches if you see x train dot shape uh, it is like 9800 examples and each example has a dimensionality of a hundred it should be uh, 9800 comma 
100 comma 1, for example, like a tensor, most of the um, deep learning frameworks, they require the data in form of the tensor to apply the batch processing or mini batch processing. And in TensorFlow, we have to set the number of examples first and the dimensions um, of, of, of our data. So let's convert the data in that particular form. So X train is basically NP dot reshape X train. So reshape X train using um, using the uh, I mean reshape the form in the following form. So this is X train dot shape zero then comma X train dot shape one and then comma one <coughs> and uh, after that you will you will be having X train in the form of 9800 into 100 into 1 so X train dot shape now it's uh, it's this form let's convert our um, test data or validation data also in the same form so we have our validation data or test data uh, test data for example also in the same form it's the X test let's convert the test data into whatever the test shape zero into the test shape one. Um, oh, that's the, it has some problem. Uh, we haven't converted our data X test into, oh, we have to convert the X test into the NumPy array. We haven't converted that. So let's do that also. Let's do that here, just in a line. Let's do that for test so let's test so done I guess and everything should be cool here now yeah so now X test will be whatever the number of samples are into a hundred into one let's check that shape so total number of samples are 1875 and each sample has dimension 100 into 1. Now we are really ready to define our model. So let's define our model, the recurrent neural network model. So model is tf.kiras.model.sequential. Let's build that model. And let's add a couple of layers. Let's add a LSTM layer first, uh, tf. Kiras dot layers dot LSTM. Let's add that layer. And uh, let's add this layer. Um, let's add a couple of parameters for this layer. So how many units are there? So let's say we are going to use, let's say 50 units. Then um, do we want to use the return sequences? The return sequences are much like this way. Do we want to return the sequences to next, then return the sequences to next, and so on? Um, yes. Return sequences. Um, true. Equals true. And then, uh, what's the input shape? Input shape. So input shape will be um, like what's the what's an example looks like. So an example looks like uh, x train um, dot shape one, which is this hundred, one example, comma one. That's how one example looks like. So that's our LSTM layer that's added. Now we can we can add some dropout here just for uh, just for uh, regularization. It's recommended Kiras dot layers dot dropout and we can set the dropout uh, probability let's say 0.2 or 0.1 or whatever suits it's a hyperparameter. We may add another LSTM or, or GRU unit on, on top of that so for example model dot add tf dot kiras dot layers dot GRU uh, and let's add this unit like number of units are let's say again 50 or maybe we can we can change that 
Um, and maybe we want this as to return sequences. Do we want uh, this to return its sequences in a stack form? Yes. Right now, what I'm doing is really an art. Um, maybe, I mean, what layers and in what order and what kind of parameters, you can play with it. And um, I mean, yeah. So, for example, we can play with this particular number, or this number, whether we are going to use a return sequences for the stacked one or not, and, and, and all, all that stuff. Uh, these are kind of hyperparameters. And maybe we want to use uh, tf.kiras. Uh, dot layers dot dropout maybe you want to use a dropout here for let's say a higher dropout for more like regularization maybe you want to add another LSTM layer or GRU layer or maybe a simple RNN layer um, just on top of the other two layers one layer is LSTM on top of that we have a GRU Maybe on top of that, we add one more layer like, like LSTM, for example. And maybe we set the number of units, uh, maybe let's say 32. Uh, and, and that's it. Let's say here, uh, we do not require the sequences to be returned uh, to the next input. And then we add our, uh, maybe a dropout layer. Maybe we add another dropout layer. And then we add our dense layer for regression, the final layer, the output layer. So model dot add uh, tf dot kiras dot layers dot dense, and maybe the total number of dense the units here because we are only working with the open the one attribute. So that's it. We need only one um, neuron for that. So that's our model. Next, we compile our model. So, model dot compile. In compile, we actually have to set. In compile, we actually have to set uh, multiple things. One is optimizer. Optimizer. Which optimizer we are going to use? Um, Adam works. I mean, almost as default these days. Uh, then we also has to set a loss function. So let's set it as tf dot kiras dot losses dot msc. Let's set that. So now the now we actually fit our model using training data. We set the batch size and the number of epochs for the training. So let's say model dot fit. Um, what's the training data? So it's x train and what's the corresponding labels? If the user y train. How many epochs do you really want? Let's say we set this for, uh, let's say 10 epochs. Uh, this is also again a parameter that should be decided much more carefully, but let's go with 10 and see uh, how it performs. And um, batch size, let's set the batch size as 32. So this will start training our model on our training data. So let's do it. It may take uh, a couple of minutes to actually train our uh, train this particular model on our data. So let's wait for it. Um, yeah. So this is the first epoch going on. Um, that's the loss value as uh, it is going over different um, different mini batches. So let's wait for a couple of minutes to to actually this training to actually complete. Okay, so after 10 epochs, um, the, it actually uh, got trained. So now let's um, evaluate the performance of our model on the, on the unseen data or the future data, at least for the training data, um, which is the test data. So let's predict first, what predictions does our model make on the test data? So uh, let's use predict function on X test. These are the predictions. Um, maybe take a few seconds, yes. Now, um, let's see the y hat, which is our prediction, and y test, which is the true value. Um, how far or how off our predictions, the model predictions are from the true value. So let's judge it by actually plotting the corresponding values side by side. So let's use uh, PLT again, figure. Let's say fig size, 
maybe <coughs> uh, the earlier one like 18 by 9 and um, let's plot our test value plt dot plot y test which is the true value in green color let's say and let's set its label as uh, as ground truth truth or maybe the the true price uh, let me write that as the actual price true price so then we actually plot our predicted value corresponding predicted value let's say in red color uh, this is let's say the color red and here we have this as y hat and right here as predicted price predicted price and we can plot the legends uh, for example plt dot legend and plt dot show so um, if our model really works very well then this green curve which is the actual curve the red curve should should follow it um, I mean let's see let's see what's the result oh amazing by the way, I need to tell you that all these patterns, uh, they are on unseen data, I mean on future data. So given the value of 100 previous days, it actually predicts the value for the next day. And all these are predictions based on the, based on basically the model that is trained on the earlier 10,000 days. So that's about stock price prediction if we just want the prediction to be made for the very next day. So as I uh, promised you earlier that I will give you some pointer, how can, we, how can we change our model to look far into the future? So let me tell you why we need to look far into the future. It turns out that mostly the, the problem of stock price prediction uh, is not mainly that given, let's say, the value of a lot of previous days, you come up with the value of one next day, but rather we want to see the trend where it is going on. So given the previous values or trends, we want to predict a trend where it is going, what, what is going to happen for the next several days. So we not only are interested in the finding out the price for the next one day or two days or maybe three days, maybe we are interested in finding out the trend for next maybe a 50 days or maybe a hundred days or more than that. So how can we change our model to actually incorporate um, for looking for very far into the future? It also it is also important to mention that predicting just the very next day can be very well modeled by moving averages, um, moving averages, and there are some other very simple models other than recurrent neural network. Uh, re recurrent neural network using LSTMs and GRU um, may be thought of as a very complicated modeling for this kind of problem, where the problem is only to judge the very next day, the predict the the price for the next day. It turns out there are simpler model that can do pretty well. But all these models, uh, they actually fail when you actually want to predict for, for the values uh, for very long period of time given the earlier values. And they are the real power of recurrent neural network that actually comes into a few. So let me give you a pointer, how can you modify the existing training data and the modeling problem and the modeling process to actually incorporate for looking very far into the future. First of all, let's build our training data just the same way we did uh, like this. But let's not generate the target values the same way. Let's generate the target values in a different way. So let's say for example, this is our sample x1, x2, dot dot, dot x100. Let's say this is our uh, first training sample, uh, this one. Let's build a target not by just a number, but also by a sequence. So what we really do is, and, and let's say we want to predict this value x101. Let's say we want to predict that. Given the 100 values, we want to predict that. So another way to model the same problem is to, uh, is to actually think of this x1 till x100 as a training sample, and x2 till x101 as a target sample. So what we really want to predict is a given x1, we want to predict x2. 
So given x2, we want to predict x3. So given x3, we want to predict x4 and so on. So what we really want to do, given the previous, the value of the previous day, we want to predict for the next day. And that's how we can change all these uh, data by uh, actually generating the target sequences rather than just a target value. So in this way, all the training and target lengths, they are exactly the same. And we, could, we can use this particular model as I'm going to show you now. Uh, for example, the model looks like the following. So that's, let's say, the recurrent layer, so x1. It should produce uh, x2, so x2 is the target. So when I give x1, it should produce x2. When I, so that's our target, uh, that's our input. It should produce x2. When I give x2, it should produce x3. That's how the target and the corresponding input, they actually matches. x2, when, when I give x2, it should produce x3, and when I give x101, x100, it should produce x101. Um, and we can actually, rather than, we can actually modify the problem using these return sequences and so on. So uh, this way, we can, we can generate our model this way, and then whenever we want to predict the sequences, we can, for example, give just, let's say, xt, xt plus one maybe, um, so we give xt, it generates xt plus one, we give, and then from xt as an input, it generates xt plus two, we give that as an input, and the model will generate actually a lot of predictions for very far in the future. And most of these predictions, I mean, for a very long period of time, they will be very, very well if this uh, recurrent neural network model is uh, tuned appropriately. And this primarily is, um, is, is the power of recurrent neural network for stock price prediction, where these moving averages and simple kind of model, they, they fail very badly. Um, for, for those who are really interested in how this, can, this kind of model can be implemented, uh, first of all, we have a full-fledged course on recurrent neural network, where we actually uh, solve this problem and give this kind of problem as a homework. Um, second, let me give you a clue. Um, in that uh, full course of recurrent neural network, we actually also have solved a problem of text generation. Um, we are given a particular text, the model actually generates similar kind of text. And for text generation, the whole modeling well, was done using this particular case. So, um, so basically, if, if you want to see how can we change our stock price prediction model, to incorporate, um, incorporate infinite kind of predictions into the future or very, very long-term uh, predictions in the future, I would suggest you should go and uh, read the tutorial on uh, text generation, either from our course, Recurrent Neural Network, or for those who just want a quick start on the code, I will recommend them to go on to uh, TensorFlow official page and there, there is a problem uh, text generation that is coded there um, and the notebooks are available there. Just uh, if, you, if you're really interested and you should be interested, I guess. So that's about it for a stock price prediction. If you really enjoyed our video, please press the like button, um, subscribe our channel and uh, share this video with your fellows. Hope to see you next time.